It is Thursday, the 15th of March, and this is your 28storms.com slash cyclone update on developing Cyclone Lua. First off, this is the latest forecast track from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. As you can see, the storm is forecast to begin moving a little bit more toward the east-southeast over the next 24 hours. And look at here, by 2 a.m. on Saturday morning, the storm is forecast to become a severe Category 4 cyclone before making landfall near Pardue as we go into the midday and afternoon hours on Saturday. And those cyclone warnings are up for a good portion of the Pilbara. And also notice that those gale watches extend well into the inland and interior portions of Western Australia. As of the latest update from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center, maximum sustained winds have increased to 60 knots and they are forecasting a peak intensity of 90 knots. Remember at this time yesterday the forecast was only calling for a peak intensity of 80 knots. So both of the intensity forecasts from the Bureau of Meteorology and the JTWC have been ever so gradually creeping upward. And the good news is that the forecast tracks are in general agreement. The JTWC is still forecasting a landfall just to the east of Port Hedland. The following is the most recent list of satellite derived positions and intensity of Cyclone Lua and there are two main things I would like to point out. First off, the following three columns show the intensity estimates and basically the higher the numbers the stronger the storm and they have been gradually increasing. We're up to a 4.0 from two out of the three respected agencies and also more importantly notice that the latitude was ever so gradually dropping and finally here by 3.15 Zulu time we have seen a slight increase in the latitude so at least the northward progression that we've seen over the last couple days is coming to an end. This graphic also shows some of what we just discussed again these are satellite derived estimates but the wind speeds are gradually increasing and the surface pressures are beginning to fall a little bit more both of which are indications that the storm is continuing to intensify. Currently there are no signs of rapid intensification However, the latest visible satellite animation confirms that Lua is definitely beginning to get its act together. As we can see earlier in this animation, the storm had much of its convection displaced to the north and to the west of the center, but within the last few frames we do see some of that convection beginning to wrap around the southern semicircle, and it also looks like it's beginning to develop a more concentrated central dense overcast. You can see what I'm talking about a little bit better here on the enhanced infrared satellite animation. We see some of those stronger convective cloud tops developing near the center and I would not be surprised that we begin to see more of an eye-like feature begin to appear within the next 6 to 12 hours. Within the past day or so, there may have been some presence of dry air intrusion beginning to funnel into the center of the storm, but this is going to be less and less of an inhibiting factor as convection continues to develop near the center. Using the latest regional water vapor satellite imagery, one can still get the picture that the convection is still displaced a little bit more to the west and north of the center of the circulation, and that is a result of the upper level ridge located just toward the southeast of the developing tropical cyclone. However, over time, the upper level ridging over the storm should begin to increase, once again, as a result of more convection and more persistent convection. And it also does not hurt the cyclone, being that it's going to eventually move in a southeast direction toward that upper level ridge. The latest wind shear analysis products from the University of Wisconsin also shows this fairly well. We can see that the main core of upper level ridging is located right along the Pilbara coast where the wind shear values are less than 10 to 15 knots. Along the, the northern side of that upper level ridge we still have about 20 knots of vertical wind shear and as we can see on this graphic just to the southeast is where the best upper level conditions are for this tropical cyclone and as we saw with the two previous official forecasts the cyclone is forecast to move into more favorable conditions for intensification. As we take a closer look at the current steering pattern, Tropical Cyclone Lua is still not forecast to move all that much within the next 24 hours. There is still the presence of mid-level ridging located to the southwest of the storm that would like to shunt the cyclone more toward the north, but it's still a battle between that mid-level ridge and the monsoon northwesterlies closer to Indonesia. But as we've stated over the past two to three days, this mid-level ridge is still forecast to weaken as a much stronger trough moves in from the southwest Indian Ocean. The overall forecast scenario has not changed in this regard. As we can see, the latest zero Z run of the ECMWF as we go into day one and day two shows the trough moving in quite well here, just to the west of Perth, Australia. And out ahead of this trough, 
The cyclone will begin to move more toward the southeast, thus it's going to be making landfall sometime around midday on Saturday, before continuing more so toward the south in 72 hours. As stated previously, the official intensity forecasts have been creeping upward, and so have the forecasts from the intensity models. At this time yesterday, several of the models were not forecasting the storm to peak much more than, say, 80 knots. And as we look today, some models are even suggesting a peak intensity much closer to 100 knots. Having said all of this, all interests across the Pilbara should be bracing for a severe cyclone landfall. Starting off with the latest run from the GFS model, it is now shifting a little bit more toward the west, and by 11 a.m. on Saturday, this model run is suggesting a potential landfall just to the west of Port Hedland. And remember, at this time yesterday, this particular model was actually showing a landfall much closer to Pardue. So there is a little bit of model inconsistency at this time, so everyone along the Pilbara should be taking this into consideration. And certainly this would be a more pessimistic solution for interest in Port Hedland. Not only would you be receiving a little bit more in the way of some of the strongest winds, but you would also be receiving the onshore flow, which will heighten the risk of significant storm surge. This forecast also gives all interest in Karatha that much more motivation to prepare for a severe cyclone, as we cannot rule out severe impacts in that area as well. It should also be noted that the GFS ensemble members are also supporting the latest run from the GFS deterministic run. As you can see here from the GFS ensemble model spread, several of the models are taking the storm in the general direction of Port Hedland. In fact, some of the western outliers are even suggesting a potential center crossing near Karatha. In the meantime, the slightly more accurate ECMWF model is remaining fairly consistent both with the timetable of a landfall and the overall position of a landfall. The latest model run shows a landfall just north of Pardue at approximately 2 p.m. So once again, there's still quite a lot of model inconsistency, and it's just a little bit too early to determine exactly where that center is going to cross the coast. But it's nearly a guarantee that this entire stretch of coastline is going to be facing some rather volatile weather conditions, and it certainly would not hurt to at least prepare as much as possible for severe cyclone impacts. Aside from the obvious impacts, that being the possibility of Category 4 force winds near the center of the storm, along with some rather significant storm surge, there will also exist the possibility of inland flooding. This is the accumulated precipitation forecast from the GFS model, and this is showing in upwards of 150 millimeters of precipitation as that center continues to move inland. Weak but fast-moving and isolated tornadoes are also possible within some of the storm's outer rain bands. It is also a good idea to check out the website from the Fire and Emergency Services Authority of Western Australia as they are continuously updating their website with Cyclone Lua related information. I would also like to quickly mention that some of the model guidance is depicting a greater chance of cyclone development along the southern half of the Gulf of Carpentaria within the next three to four days as some of this remnant activity from the tropical low over the top end continues to move more toward the east and this is something that we will begin to focus on a little bit more here over the next 24 hours. So that is all for now from us here at 28storms.com. Once again, don't forget to check out 28storms.com slash cyclone, not only for more video updates, but also more Twitter updates on the right-hand side of the page, along with a wide array of information from various sources from across the Internet.